10 years and then they're kicked out or they decide to leave, they're reduced to zero. Financially, emotionally, it was their last spiritual straw. And so what kind of shape are they left in after contact with that group? That's the fruit that you see. So you're saying judge this tree by the fruit that it's produced? I'm oh, saying yeah. they should use their own criteria to judge themselves. Mm -hmm. If they did, they would disband and everyone would leave today. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the whole Island Pond event. Did you know it was coming, this raid by police and so on? Uh, you must have an entirely different perspective at the time. Tell me what you were thinking at the time when that first came down. And the children were taken away. And I was, I was sent out of town because the uh, uh, guy named Arthur Freitag had given the names of the leaders of uh, the community. I was a household head at that particular time. And I was about to go to school out in Utah to learn to make uh, cowboy boots and hiking boots. I, I had a shoe repair shop at that time. And they got me out of town quick because they had captured uh, six or seven of them and they were looking for me, but everybody thought my name was Simon Tanner. <laughs> that, was, that was the name of my business. It was a name taken from the Bible. Yeah, it was a name. Simon yeah, it was in the book of Acts. And everybody thought that was my name in the town because I fixed everybody's shoes. And uh, no one. Where's old Simon at? Yeah, Simon. Oh, boy. And I, I'd been sent out of town to keep from getting arrested also. And uh, then they did arrest them the week I left. Then we, I, the week I got back uh, from this seminar, about a month long seminar, uh, the raid happened and they were still looking for me. And I was sent out of town uh, on a, like a vacation with my wife and children. And the raid happened uh, the day we left, uh, or the next day. And um, we had to go, we were told to go hide in Maine, so we took off to Maine and hid up in Maine for a few days. And then came back. Yeah, then came back. And Jim, were you there? Yeah, you? I was there. Well, and, okay, uh, tell me what happened. We, well, we were, um, had kind of been expecting something along those lines. Why, where was mm -hmm. it coming from? From the, the children, the... Uh, right, the there had been uh, many uh, accusations of uh, child abuse and uh, by former members also, which lent, um, you know, more strength to the allegations. And um, there, I mean, I'll, I'll state unequivocally, there was child abuse in the community. And uh, I don't... Physical it's, child abuse. Physical, yeah. Definitely mental and emotional. Mm -hmm. But uh, physical child abuse, too. And a lot of that was from ignorance out of people wanting to obey... Um, you know, Gene Spriggs, who had no chil who had no children in the community. He did he did have a child by a former marriage, but he had no children in the community. And what did he teach about discipline that turned into abuse? Uh, the uh, basic <coughs> um, biblical verses he used was, um, if a child sins, you shall something along the order of you shall beat him. Though you beat him, he shall not. Yeah, die. though you beat him. Uh, spare the rod, spoil the child, uh, in the Proverbs. And raise up a child in the way he should go, and when he's old he shall not depart from them. And all that was tied into uh, a lot of um, psychological stuff that he'd read and picked up somewhere. He, you know, he plagiarizes all of his major teachings. And uh, So people were physically beating their children oh, yeah. in response to Spriggs' teaching. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, it was like the stuff you read in the paper. You know, I mean, the papers kind of sensationalized things, but it was actually maybe ten times worse than what the papers had any idea about. We've both seen children beat to almost the point of death. My daughter, you know, for one, Rachel. My daughter, for another. Yeah. And, and who would do the beating? My wife did it this time. I, I, was, uh, I was running the bakery. Uh, this was 1978, I guess. And we just started. Uh, Gene's teachings about child training had just started coming down from Vermont. He had moved to Vermont. And um, Eddie Wiseman was about to move to Vermont. And uh, he held a teaching in Chattanooga. And he had a, a dowel. It wasn't what we actually used on the children, but I don't know why he had the dowel up there. And he was giving a teaching, three foot long. and. Um, he said, though you beat him with a rod, he shall not die. And he said, what did that say? Beat. It says beat, 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 and over and over and over again. And he slapped the table. And so everybody wanting to just blindly obey the anointing's teachings, 
went home and just beat the tar out of their kids for the next few days. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the very next day, uh, because the children had to break, part of Gene Sprigg's teaching that I, he probably plagiarized from somebody else, I'm sure, um, talked about children.